Hi, I'm Mark from ACLS Certification Institute. And in today's video, we're talking about pharmacology, ACLS pharmacology, with an emphasis on atrial rhythms, medications that we use to treat atrial arrhythmias. Now, it's not uncommon, sometimes you'll be looking up a drug, you're looking up the mechanism in a PDR or Hippocrates, and it'll say exact mechanism of the drug is unknown. Like, what the heck is that? We don't know what the drug does? We have an idea what it does, but the exact mechanism is unknown. So you go talk to Dr. Fictitious and you go, hey, professor, how does this drug really work? And that is a great question. How does this drug work exactly? Let's take a look. Now, if you look over here, see this? And then look right here. See this part here? Now, look over here. Not so much here, but this part right here. If you look at this, it is obvious we have no idea how this drug works. Couldn't tell you. Oh, that was all but useless. Let's say we just move on to the drugs, huh? Now here's a drug you can have some fun with your friends with, adenosine. Now adenosine is used to treat narrow complex symptomatic tachycardias. They're stable, patients stable, but symptomatic narrow complex tachycardias. Now adenosine has a very, very short half-life. Once it hits the body, it's only hanging out for a few seconds. So adenosine is one of those drugs that you have to Hit, uh, flush in quickly and then hit it immediately with a 20 cc syringe bolus and push that drug to the heart. Otherwise, it's not going to work. But it's fun for the new paramedics, and here's why. You'll be in the back of the rig and you see this strip going on, and you go, Okay, Timmy, go ahead, give him this drug. And it's adenosine. So we tell him how to give the adenosine, he pushes the adenosine, and then you see this on the monitor. <sighs> Timmy, what'd you do? What'd you do? Oh, uh, never mind. It's okay. Okay. But it scares the hell out of Timmy. Because you're going to have that asystole pause that is characteristic of adenosine administration. Now try to have some fun with it while you're at it. Now, if the first dose of adenosine doesn't work, double it. You can give a second dose of 12 milligrams IV push. If that still doesn't work, eh, maybe you want to step back and we have something else going on. Maybe this could be a ventricular arrhythmia with an aberrant conduction. Something else is going on, and that's why we give adenosine sometimes in ventricular arrhythmias to just diagnose, is this really ventricular or atrial in origin? That's another way that we could use adenosine to rule that out. If it's ventricular, it's probably not going to do anything. If it's a neurocomplex tachycardia, I've had great results with adenosine breaking that tachycardic cycle. Let's talk about verapamil for a minute. Another drug that we use for narrow complex irregular tachycardias. Now, we use adenosine for regular narrow complex tachycardias. We can use verapamil for narrow complex irregular tachycardias. Can you use verapamil for narrow complex regular tachycardias? Absolutely. So you could use verapamil for regular or irregular narrow complex tachycardias. It's a calcium channel blocker. You want to give it slowly. The dose is five milligrams, slow IV push over three to five minutes. And you want to have one finger on that print button on the monitor so that as soon as the patient starts to convert or break that tachycardic cycle, you can capture it uh, on film. Another calcium channel blocker we use for treating narrow complex tachycardias is Cardizem. The dose of Cardizem is 0.25 milligrams per kilogram and you can repeat with 0.35 milligrams per kilogram. Once the patient converts and they're out of that tachycardic rhythm, you can start a Cardizem drip at five to 15 milligrams per hour. Again, it's a calcium channel blocker, and I've had great results with Cardizem converting a narrow complex to irregular tachycardias and slowing that rate down, rate control. That's really what the Cardizem is for, is controlling that rate. give you some of Dad's medicine. It's real strong stuff. That is a prescription for danger. Doc! Never take medicine without a grown-up present. You could do more harm than good. And now we know what to do next time. And knowing is half the battle. So what about atropine? What about atropine? Atropine is a parasympathetic blocker. And this is how a lot of drugs work. A lot of drugs, when they're introduced in the body, really don't do anything. They either inhibit or enhance a body's normal uh, function. And it's kind of how atropine works. Now let's take the sympathetic, parasympathetic system as an example because atropine is a parasympathetic blocker. 
Let's say I'm driving a car, 10 miles an hour. I have my foot on the brake and my foot on the gas at the same time, pushing down on both, and doing that, I'm getting the car to move 10 miles an hour. Fantastic. Now let's say I want the car to go a little faster. Well, I could push on the gas, but atropine doesn't do that. Atropine blocks the brake. It's a parasympathetic blocker. So it simply takes off the brake, leaving the gas unopposed, the car goes faster. Well, that's how atropine works. It blocks the parasympathetic system, leaving the sympathetic system unopposed, and that raises the heart rate. Cool, didn't really do anything to raise the heart rate, it just stopped the brake. Make sense? Why do we use atropine? We use atropine for symptomatic bradycardia and some blocks. Third degree blocks, higher blocks, is probably not gonna work. But lower blocks and uh, bradycardia, absolutely indicated. The dose, 0.5 milligrams IV push to a max dose of 0.04 milligrams per kilogram for a total of three milligrams. Remember, if the atropine isn't working, if you have a symptomatic patient who's bradycardic and the atropine isn't working, get your pacer pads ready. Those are coming up next. But atropine is a great parasympathetic blocker and a great drug for raising heart rate. As much as we joke around in these videos, Probably nothing is more serious than drug administration or administering a medication to a patient. They estimate about 100,000 people are gonna die this year from medication errors caused by us. Be careful when you're administering a medication. Know the drugs you're administering. At three in the morning, I'm double checking. I'm going, hey, is this Verapamil? No, Vecuronium. Okay, well, good thing I didn't give that. Double check your drugs. Remember, it's not why do you wanna give a drug, why do you not want to give that drug? Double check. Make sure you have the right patient, the right drug, the right dose, the right route, the right time, and you're documenting it properly. Take drug administration seriously, or as seriously as we can in this video. Thanks for watching.